say welcome this morning. Welcome to Progressive Community Church. This is our Sunday morning worship service. Look, we're here at the last first Sunday of 2021. Amen. 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 This is the last first Sunday of 2021. And I don't know about you, but I can look back through the, the rest of this year, this past year, and see and say that in spite of everything that's happening in the world, that God has still been good. Amen. That God is still good in spite of COVID, in spite of Delta, in spite of Omicron, uh, in spite of COVID-19 or whatever other name they want to give it, in spite of whatever it is that we've been through. I can testify that God is good. Amen. He's good. And he's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. And our God is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. And so we just come, hallelujah, on this last Sunday, last first Sunday of 2021 to give God. We come like we always come to give God praise. Amen. There should never be a day that we're not praising and thanking God for all that he has done for us. Amen. Small thing he did. He woke you up this morning. Hallelujah. Put breath in your body. Started you on your way. If you have food, he put food on your table. If you ain't got nothing on the arm and the grid, you get some. Hallelujah. He put food on your table. Clothes on your back. Amen. A reasonable portion of our health and our strength. Might not have everything we want. Amen. And thank God for what we have. Amen. And I'm so grateful today because God keeps on doing great things. Amen. Keeps on doing. He keeps on doing great things. So we want to welcome you, all of those that are watching uh, by way of social media. We say thank you for watching. We pray that you would prepare your house or wherever it is that you're watching from. Prepare that as a sanctuary. Prepare your heart. Hallelujah. Let's get ready to worship. Amen. Get ready. Get your house ready. Get your head ready. Get your heart ready. Get your hands ready. Get your feet ready. Get, get your soul ready. Get your spirit ready to come and to give your all to God. Amen. We come to, to worship him. We, we come to receive instruction from him because when we're in God's house, God speaks to us. We come to receive instruction from him, but then we come to fellowship with the other believers and uh, 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 it's made it difficult to do that because of COVID, but, but thanks be to God through social media, God connects us all, amen. Those who are worshiping here in this house, he connects us with those that are watching wherever they are watching from so that together, hallelujah, we are worshiping God in spirit and we're worshiping him. We're worshiping our God in truth. So Sister Bree is going to come this morning and she's going to offer up our invocation as we welcome and invite the Spirit of God to move and have His way in our midst. Amen. 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 We call the Spirit of the Lord, the quiet Spirit this morning to enter in, Father God. We call on the Word to lift us and guide us and move us to direct us, Father God. Amen. We thank you, Father God, for another day, Father God, another day in your sanctuary, yes. another day for your word to move us, Father God, your word to guide us, Father God, your word to direct us, Father God, lift us up, Father God, inspire us, show us, teach us, Father God, give us, Father God. Thank you for the spirit of you, Father God, the spirit that woke us this morning and watch us as we step this night. Thank you for the spirit, Father God, that you give us. 
where you are if you're watching by way of social media. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Hallelujah. As we go before the Lord this morning in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask Mr. Dawson to come and lead us in prayer this morning. Hallelujah.
Amen. He's worthy of all of the glory. He's worthy of all of the honor. And he is worthy of all, all of our praise. Let's give the Lord a hand to our praise. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 If you have your Bibles, won't you turn with me to the gospel according to Luke. This is the Advent season. Hallelujah. Luke, the first chapter. It's the third book in the New Testament. There's Matthew, there's Mark, and then there's Luke, Luke, the physician. Hallelujah. Who writes in detail. Hallelujah. A historical account of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Luke, the first chapter. We're going to be. In verses 5 through 25. Amen. 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 We're going to look at uh, some verses in there, but I want to, to give you the context of, of where, where we are headed. Amen. Amen. As we look at this season uh, that, that, that Jesus was born. Amen. 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 Matthew, Mark, Luke, chapter 1, verse 5. And it reads, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. They were blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. They were old. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. They're outside praying while he's inside praying. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even while he's in his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias, to turn in the hearts of the fathers to the children, and be disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to shew thee these glad tidings. I'm bringing you this good news, and behold, thou shalt be dumb. You're not going to be able to speak not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season and the people waited for Zacharias to marvel that he tarried so long in the temple and when he came out he could not speak unto them and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless and it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein it looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Amen. You may be seated this morning as we meditate today on a thought of finding hope in the midst of despair. Time to turn this up some. Finding hope in the midst of despair. Finding hope in the midst 
of despair. Sister Lisa is going to come this morning and, and she's going to give us a hymn of meditation. Amen? Amen. Amen.
find a hope in times of despair. Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise you. We pray now, O oh God, for your word, O oh God, your word that brings liberation and sets us free. We pray now, God, for your, your word that brings transformation, O oh God, and it changes us. We pray, God, for your word that brings reconciliation, God, and hallelujah. It, it helps us, O oh God, to get along with you and with each other, O oh God. And then, God, we thank you, O oh God, for your word, hallelujah, that brings elevation. It takes us higher in you. Now, God, we come today, O oh God, to hear a word from you, O oh God be inspired by your word, oh God. We don't come in shape, form, or fashion, oh God, but we come, hallelujah, with our face to the ground, oh God. Lord, we need a word from you today, oh God. We're struggling, oh God. We need a word from you, oh God. Somebody's in despair today, oh God, and we need a word from you. Somebody, oh God, is going through a storm, God, and we need a word from you, oh God. So speak now, God, to me, and then speak through me, O oh God, that your people, O oh God, would hear your voice, O oh God, but not only hear your voice, but to heed your word, O oh God. Let, let them apply your word to their life, O oh God, that they might be the better because of your word. And then, God, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart, we pray that they're acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength our most precious redeemer and the church all said together amen 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 finding hope in times of despair my sisters and my brothers hope is an anticipation that that what has been promised is soon to come hope hope is an anticipation and what has been promised is going to it's going to happen. It's going it's going to come. It's going to come to pass. It's also an expectation that that what I'm going through right now is is getting ready to change. Amen. It's an expectation that that the storm that I am that I'm in right now I'm not going to always be in this storm. It's an expectation that that I'm coming out. It's an expectation that God is going to deliver me from where it is that I find myself. It's an expectation that, hallelujah, the darkness is not going to overcome the light, but that the light has overcome the darkness. It's an anticipation, hallelujah, that what God has promised, that God is going to perform, but it's also an expectation that where I am, I'm not always going to be and unfortunately some of us have hallelujah lost hope you lost the ability to expect God to perform hallelujah what God said he was going to perform and do what God said he was going to do some of us have have lost hope hallelujah you've lost uh, uh, your living life with, without any expectation that, that what you are going through right now is capable of being changed. Some of us have lost, lost hope, lost hope, lost hope. Hallelujah. You're living life without an expectation that the storm will soon be over. Some, some have have lost hope. And if you've lost hope, you might be like Michael Collins. Michael Collins, hallelujah, he he was a man who who had a spinal cord injury. And, and, and Michael Collins, he went, hallelujah, to the doctor believing that, that in the 1980s that the doctors would, aid, would be able to help him with his spinal cord injury. He, he was injured Hallelujah. And, and because of his injury, he could not walk. And, and he went to the doctor, Brother Carlos, and, and the doctors told him in no uncertain terms that we're not going to play around with you. We're not going to play around with this. This is, hallelujah, the way that you are and the way that you always will be. Yeah. 
when he got to the doctor, the doctor, hallelujah, said, I'm not going to give you any falsehood. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. You're paralyzed and you will always be paralyzed. He left, Michael says, the doctor's meeting, hallelujah, and, and the small hope that he had of ever walking again began to fade from his life. And then he went, hallelujah, to the psychologist and the psychiatrist. And they too, hallelujah, just piled on what he received from his doctor. That his situation would never get better. And he just had to live with not being able to walk again. He had been fed, hallelujah, to believe that his life situation would never change. And, and, and when you lose hope, someone once said, when you lose hope, you might as well not be living. When you lose hope, then everything else around you, you, you have no more expectation. You have no more promise, hallelujah, that things will get better when you lose hope. You lose the desire to trust that what someone tells you will actually happen. That it will actually come to pass. And I'm afraid as I look throughout the congregation, hallelujah, that to say that, that, that you're sitting next to or across from somebody who's lost hope. Yeah, you're sitting in a sanctuary with somebody who does not believe, hallelujah, that that life as they know it will get better. That life as they know it, hallelujah, will change sitting with somebody who's lost lost the ability to believe that even God is able hallelujah to change their life and I want to submit to you today if you've lost hope that, that, that that's a bad place to be in today if you've lost hope that, 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 that you find yourself in a bad situation if you no longer have the ability to believe that even God is able to change your situation or what God promised you that he is not able to perform then uh, you found yourself and you find yourself in a bad place and, and in our text today that's exactly what we look at in our text today we find uh, two people we'll call them Zach and Liz we find Zach and Liz the Bible gives us a description hallelujah of two people who are in a painful situation here it is, the text opens up with us learning about the life of this elderly couple that the Bible tells us they live an exemplary life in every other area, but in the area of having a child, they surrendered hope. They were faithful and righteous and blameless in every other area, but in the area of having a child, they convinced themselves that it would never take place. And I can see them blaming each other regarding whose problem it was that they were not able to conceive and they both came to the conclusion that it was time to put this dream to bed. It was time to stop dreaming about this. They consulted with gynecologists and, and they went to the doctor and they had in vitro fertilization and they attempted all of the advanced medical procedures that they were able, hallelujah, and that were available to them during their day and it still came away empty. Yeah. And because of this issue, they, they are two people, Liz and Zach, who have no hope. Hallelujah. Somebody here today, hallelujah, you, you, you're like Liz and Zach. You're, you're living, hallelujah, from day to day in a place, hallelujah, where you too have no hope. You're living in a painful and in a pitiful situation because now you, like Zach and Liz, have lost all hope that anything in your life can change, but in spite of their painful situation, hallelujah, it, 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 I want you to notice, hallelujah, in verses 8 through 10, their, 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 their prayerful participation, hallelujah, in other words, hallelujah, although they have given up on God about having a child, hallelujah, uh, Zach is still serving. 
Hallelujah. He didn't allow his painful situation, hallelujah, to stop and dictate, hallelujah, his participation. He, he might not be lifting up prayers for himself about a child, but he is still praying for people. He may not be lifting up prayers for offspring, but he is still praying, hallelujah, for the nation. He may not be lifting up prayers for a son, but he is still lifting up prayers that people and for people regarding the Savior, in spite of what he was going through he did not stop serving even when he didn't obtain what he was seeking from God and just because it didn't happen for, for Zach Hallelujah. He said, I'm not going to let it stop me from serving God. The reason they were able, hallelujah, to see, hallelujah, their dead dreams manifested and realized is because they didn't stop serving God. He stayed faithful to his assignment even though he had issues in his own life. He had, hallelujah, hallelujah, not stayed faithful. If he had not stayed faithful, he wouldn't have been offering up prayers on behalf of the people. And he would have missed out on his opportunity for God to work in his life. The Bible doesn't share it, but I suspect that for a time they were mad at God for not hearing their prayers for a child. As you all know how it is when you pray to God and God, hallelujah, does not answer. Hallelujah. Well, I ain't going to talk about you. I'm going to talk about me that I sometimes get mad at God. Hallelujah. When God does not answer the prayer that I put out, I sometimes get mad at God and like that. Hallelujah. And Liz, I can, I can imagine them being mad at God. Hallelujah. Because God doesn't answer their prayers and then he refuses to answer their call. And I can imagine that they had, hallelujah, their time where they thought about even quitting the church and giving up on God. But notice in the text that in spite of his spiritual, hallelujah, pain, that he is still praying for a change to occur in the life and in the conditions of his community. He has buried his own prayer for a son, but like those outside praying, he's still praying for a nation. He has buried his dreams of having his own child because that chapter in his life has closed and he declared that it would never be revisited again. The hope of that season had faded but it did not allow his disappointment to stop him from participating in ministry. He could have stayed at home. Hallelujah. Mad at God and turned away from the church and turned away from religion and turned away from doing what was right in God's eyes. But something kept him serving. Hallelujah. Something kept him coming back even when their own prayers were unanswered and their own dreams were dashed. And so we got to ask the question today, Deacon is fine. What makes you keep on serving when it does not seem like God is answering? Yeah. Uh, 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 let's see. Hallelujah. Uh, we can suggest some reasons that people per, uh, stay in participation even when they got pain. That people continue to serve even when it looked like God ain't answering. Let me see if I can help you. Maybe he was serving. Hallelujah. Maybe it was the prestige of the position that kept him serving. Yeah, some people, hallelujah, don't get respect anywhere else. But 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 because, hallelujah, of, of his position in the church, hallelujah, he gets respect in society. And maybe he, he just wanted people to respect him as a man, hallelujah. And that's the reason why he kept serving, because he got respect. And some people in church, the only reason, hallelujah, they don't care nothing about God at the church. The only reason that they're in church is because they have a title, and that title, hallelujah, affords them, hallelujah, some respect in church. I'm an elder, I'm a deacon, I'm a bishop, I'm a so-and-so, and a what-and-what, -and, -what. and the only reason I serve is because, hallelujah, the prestige of the position. Y'all remember Jesus, hallelujah, he's talking about them and in, in, in praying, and he said one of them came, hallelujah, and, and, and he came out and prayed and said, God, I thank you that I ain't like that man over there. 
Hallelujah. In, in their day, if you were a priest, you, 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 wherever you went, hallelujah, they moved you to the front of the line. It was the prestige of the position. And, and sometimes the prestige of the position keep us prayer, hallelujah, in, in, in participating in a worship, even though our heart is far away from God. Hallelujah. We're here because of the prestige of the position. Or maybe it's not the prestige of the position. Maybe, hallelujah, they keep serving because of the power of the position. Yeah. You know how some people get when they have a small amount of power? Yeah, they believe they can control everything that happens, especially when they let, hallelujah, the power of the position get to their head. Hallelujah. You ever seen somebody, hallelujah, who got a little bit of power and now they think they rule the world because they got a little bit of power and they command you to do this and do that and come here and go there because they got a little bit of power. Maybe it was because, hallelujah, of the, the power that came with the position that they were serving, but let me suggest to you that it was not the prestige of the position, nor was it the power of the position that kept them serving, but I believe that they are serving, hallelujah, Sister Lisa, because of the promise of the position. Hallelujah. I believe they're serving because of the promise that, 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 that it was a promise that kept them being faithful when the same disappointment caused others to turn away. Hallelujah. There are some people, hallelujah, who are in church right now. Hallelujah. Because they did not get what God, hallelujah, they thought they should get from God. And the disappointment caused them to turn away from serving God. But I want to know if there's anybody in here, hallelujah, that has experienced your fair share of disappointment but you're still saying I'm going to serve the true and living God no matter if I've been disappointed in life they had the promise hallelujah this is why I believe they're serving because hallelujah they have the promise of the position. Here is the promise of the position. The promise that one day a Messiah would be born and bring salvation and deliverance. And when you understand and can connect, hallelujah, the Bible and the scripture when it talks about, uh, hallelujah, one that will be born and bring deliverance and salvation, then the reason they're serving is because they're standing on the promises of God. And I want to know is there anybody in here today that can hold on to the promises of God? They promise never to leave you or forsake you. Is there anybody in this place that can hold on? Hallelujah. Even when you got a hang up, I can hold on to the promise. Uh, they were holding on to the promises of God. Here it is. Here it is. They, 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 they looked at it this way. That's why he said, hallelujah, about Aaron and Elizabeth being king of Aaron. And he was in the priestly order because he was taking them back, hallelujah, to history. And the history tells them that you may face a red sea in your life. But all you got to do is hold on to God's unchanging hand because God is able to open up a red sea. You might face a fiery furnace, uh, but all you got to do is keep holding on to the promise that God will deliver you from a furnace. Hallelujah. You got to hold on to the promise. Hallelujah. It wasn't about the prestige of the position. Hallelujah. Or the power that came with the position, but it was the promise that they tapped into. Hallelujah. That, that God ain't done yet. And I wonder if there's anybody in this place, hallelujah, that can make up your mind and shout that God ain't done yet. Hallelujah. I wonder if there's anybody in this place, hallelujah, that want to get your hope back today. Hallelujah. You've lost hope, but today is the day that you reclaim hope and say, hallelujah, in your heart and in your spirit that God ain't done yet. 
What about you? What keeps you holding on and coming back even though your dreams have been dashed and your hope has been lost? What keeps you faithful to God and to the church and to ministry even though what you prayed for has gone unanswered? What about you? What keeps you steadfast and immovable and holding on to God's unchanging hand even when the situations in life seem to be opposite of what you're praying for? What keeps you holding on to God's unchanging hand. First we see in verses 5 through 7 their painful situation. Then in verses 8 through 10 we notice their faithful participation. And then in verses 11 through 13 we'll discover their private confrontation. It's a private confrontation. Right there in the text in verses 11 through 13 it reads and, and, and there appeared as he was praying, there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now, the altar of incense, incense, anytime uh, you see it in the Bible, it simply means sending up prayers to God. So as he is praying, hallelujah, the angel appears to him. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and, and fear fell upon him. He was scared. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. As he, now, now just imagine if he would have given up uh, all hope uh, and would not have gone back uh, into the house of God uh, to do the responsibility uh, that God had created him for. If he would have gone back, uh, hallelujah, and left God, uh, he would not have received uh, a word from God uh, that your prayer has been answered. And I wonder if there's anybody in this place, hallelujah, that understands that you can't quit uh, because God ain't done yet. Uh, you can't give up uh, because God still has something uh, to say. Here's the private conference confrontation. Notice in the text what happens when he is faithful in service to the Lord in spite of his pain, that God will send an angel to bring a message uh, of good news, uh, hallelujah, that brings up an issue that, that's a source of consternation. Here is the, here is the private. It's between him and God. That's why it's private. God won't put your business out in the street. It's private. It's between him and God. It's a private confrontation. But I want you to know what he brings up in the private conversation. He, he receives a message from God, uh, hallelujah, that brings up an issue that, that was a source of consternation. He said, he said it right there in the text in verse 13. He said, fear not, hallelujah, thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. In fighting words. <laughs> Hallelujah. He had already put that to bed. He, he had already made up in his mind that, that him and Elizabeth ain't going to talk about, hallelujah, that no more. He brings up, the angel does, an issue that is a source of great pain. I can hear Zach saying, I buried that pain in the past, and, and you have the audacity to come and to try to make me relive this pain. Even though he was a priest that served in the temple, and even though he was a devout and faithful priest in most areas, this is one area in which he fell short. Notice in the text where God starts working in his life. Don't miss this. Hallelujah. Notice that God confronts him in the very area that has caused him so much hurt. Glory to your name, God. You missed it. Hallelujah. When God is ready to work in your life, he'll start in those areas that have caused you the most hurt. He'll start in those areas that have caused you the most concern. He'll start in those areas where you got issues. He'll start in those areas. Hallelujah. God confronts him in the one area where he has already given up on God. The one area where he believes God can no longer work. God starts to work in the area where he has given up hope. God starts to work in the one area where he has allowed his hurt to shape his future. And what this text teaches me is that God will confront you in the area or the areas that you don't believe God can work. Yeah. 
God will confront you in the very area that you have stopped hoping in. What is that area for you? Like Liz and Zach, you prayed and prayed and prayed, hallelujah, for a child and nothing happened. Like Liz and Zach, you prayed and prayed and prayed for healing of your loved one, hallelujah, or even for yourself. Uh, and, 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 and you're still stuck. You're still not healed. You're still paralyzed. What is that issue for you? Because whatever that issue is for you, Today, the message is God is going to confront you in that place. Amen. Hallelujah. Like Liz and, and, and Zach, you prayed, hallelujah, about a better life filled with better things and your life still empty. Hallelujah. God's going to confront you in that place like Zach and Liz. You prayed and prayed and prayed for financial stability and you're still financially unstable. Hallelujah. God's going to confront you in that place. You prayed and cried for a spouse that the prayer was not answered. And because of that, you gave up all hope in that area. And you got to be careful about losing hope, even if it's in one area, because... Because losing it in one area is a slippery slope. Yeah, yeah. Which means that you've opened the door to lose hope in another area. And in the faith context, it means that you no longer believe that God is able to bring about what he promised uh, that he would bring about in your life. So you got to be careful about giving up hope too soon. It means you no longer believe that God is able to do just what he said he would do. It means that you stop walking by faith. And there are those of us who like that come to church every day and have no hope in the here and now, but only have hope in the here and after. Hallelujah. Praying faithfully for something that, that they don't even believe in. Hallelujah. Don't even believe is possible in the here and now because they lost all hope. And there are those who like that come to church every day and have no hope in the here and now, but only have hope in the here and after. You're praying faithfully for something that you don't even believe is possible in the here and now because they lost all hope. He is like some of us. He is living with eschatological hope. That's the hope in the eternal place. That's the hope when you're with Jesus. But you ain't got no hope for your present life. Hallelujah. He, he's living with hope for heaven, but no hope here on earth. He's living with hope for the afterlife, but very, hallelujah, little hope for his current life. They had hope that one day a Messiah would come, but they had given up hope for themselves because God did not bless them the way they thought that God should bless them. It was this one thing that caused them to lose hope in God. And the question today is what one thing, hallelujah, that happened in your life or, or what has happened in your life that has caused you to lose hope in God? What, what, what was the thing that caused you to live life or is causing you to live life without hope? What is that one area? What is that one thing that caused you to give up on God? Hallelujah. For some, it is one area, but for others, it's multiple areas. It's, it's multiple places where you've lost hope in God, and it has caused you to not serve God anymore. And if we're going to rediscover, hallelujah, hope in this season, we got to understand and ask ourselves some critical questions. When did it happen? Hallelujah. Where did it happen? When and what caused you to give up hope? What caused you to surrender hope? I understand that you've given up on self, and I understand that you may have given up on others, but what caused you to give up on God? What caused you to let go of your hope in God? What has, what's caused you to give up on believing that God is able to do the impossible? What caused you to give up your hope that God is able to still make a way out of no way? What caused you to lose hope that, that God is not able to work miracles? What one thing have you given up that caused you to believe, hallelujah, to lose hope? in the dreams that God has given to you? What, what, what caused you to believe that, that you can't be a successful business owner? What, what caused you to believe that you can't write a best-selling 
What, what caused you to believe that you can't, hallelujah, do the impossible and, and live the impossible? What caused you to believe that you can't get a house? What caused you to believe, hallelujah, I know what your credit score says, hallelujah, but I believe in a God who is able, hallelujah, to do the impossible even with your credit score. What caused you to believe that you could not graduate from college? What caused you to believe that you could not make it. Come on now. Yes. What is it? Yes. That caused you to believe, hallelujah, hallelujah, that God can't fix what's broken yes. in your life. Yes. What caused you to believe that He can't, hallelujah, bless your daughter? Or, or, or cause you to believe that He can't, hallelujah, bless your children? What, what caused you to believe that He can't make a way? When it doesn't look like a way, right. it's possible. God will confront you. That's what I, I'm trying to get you to see. When God shows up in your life, get ready for a confrontation. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's going to confront the things that cause you to lose hope in him. When, when God shows up, that's what happened with Zach. The angel showed up. He was a messenger sent by God, ready to give him good news, but he confronted him in the very area where he had lost hope. Yeah, he's going to confront you in those places where you fail to believe. And he simply has a question for, for you. What is causing you not to to believe in me. Well, well in verses 18 to 21, unless I hold you too long, uh, I will go through the other verses in Bible study on Wednesday. But in verses 18 to 21, and Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in years. Notice in our text, that Zechariah had given up on his request for a child. And we can tell this by his response to the angel when Gabriel shared that they would have a child. He says, on what basis is this going to take place? Hallelujah. Which suggests to us that he is seeking proof as to how it's going to happen. He, he does not trust the angel's word until he is provided with sufficient evidence uh, as to how it's going to take place. He's from Missouri. He said, you got to show me. Hallelujah. He, he, he had prayed before for a child and had now given up hope that it would happen. But this text suggests to me that, that even though he gave up, that God didn't give up. Hallelujah. That's good news for somebody. At least it should be. Hallelujah. That even though he stopped, hallelujah, and gave up on his prayers, that God didn't give up on his prayers. Hallelujah. I don't know who that's for today. Hallelujah. You've been praying and praying and praying, and you think that God has forgotten about you. But baby, I'm here to tell you today that God has not forgotten. You need to help me preach this thing to somebody and tell somebody today that God has not forgotten about your prayer. That God has not forgotten about your your prayer that God hears your prayer instead of excitement and joy this response suggests that, that God must have made an error yeah. how is this going to happen is what he says he, he would suggest to me that he has an eye problem yeah. somebody say eye problem. eye problem point to your eyes and say he got an eye problem, eye problem. yeah look at the text he says his gray he sees his gray as being greater than his God. He's old. Yeah. He's looking at his grave. Yeah. And he said, now, now, hallelujah, this ain't going to happen because my grave yeah. is greater than my God. He got an eye problem. Hallelujah. He, he, he views his old age as an obstacle that God cannot operate with. He got an eye problem. He sees his wife. Look what he says about his wife. He sees his wife as outside of the window of opportunity, which means that he minimizes God's ability. The priest is looking at life through the lens of the world around him. And what happens to us when the one that should have hope in all areas looks at life uh, and therefore at God uh, as if God can handle 
my situation. This text teaches us that even, hallelujah, people of faith, hallelujah, even pastors and deacons and ushers and, and those who are serving have faith that is fragile. Yeah, yeah. You want to put people on a pedestal, but all of us have faith that is fragile. But the angel showed up to help him deal with his fragile faith. God sent an angel to help him, hallelujah, get his hope back. God sent an angel to help him see life differently because he had an eye problem. Somebody said he had an eye problem. Now point to yourself because he also had an eye problem. Hallelujah. Notice in the text that Zach says, sees himself as he sees himself as the answer. If I can't do it, then it can't be done. He got an eye problem. Hallelujah. He, he, he looks at the limitations that he has, hallelujah, and places those same limitations on God. He got an and some of us, the reason that things aren't happening in your life is not because God ain't able to do it. It's because you have placed a limit on God. You got... Yeah, yeah, you got an eye problem. And oftentimes, here it is, we miss out on the favor of God and, and on fellowship with God and seeing God work miracles in our life. And it ain't got nothing to do with God, but it got everything to do with me. He had, a, he had an eye problem. His eyes and his eye won't allow him to see the world around him the way God sees it. And here is the message of the text. God wants to change your eyes. Hallelujah. And I love God because God can take the very thing that you think is an impediment and use it as an instrument to display his immutability. Here it is again. God can take the very thing that you think is an impediment. I can't have a baby. God can take the, the very thing you think is an impediment and use it as an instrument. Hallelujah. His wife is beyond the age of having a baby. That's the impediment. God can use her as an instrument to, to show his immutability. What does humility mean? It simply means that God don't change. Hallelujah. There's no changing of his will. There's no changing of his character. There's no changing of his promise. Uh, if God promised it to you, his promise won't change. Uh, and it simply means uh, that God can take uh, what looks like an impediment, uh, what looks like it won't happen, uh, and God can use it uh, for your good. Uh, has anybody in this place uh, ever experienced uh, God? taking an obstacle and turning it around for your good. Hallelujah. Come here, Joseph. If Joseph were here, hallelujah, he changed the same minute for, the, for evil. Hallelujah. The pit, he made it for evil. Hallelujah. The prison, he made it for evil. But God can change what somebody else meant for your destruction. And God can use it for your development. God can change what somebody went to take you out. And God can use it to set you up. God can take what somebody meant to destroy you. And God can use it to develop you. Is there anybody in this place that's looking for God to take the same thing that the world said ain't no good? He'll take the same thing that the world said ain't got no value. He'll take the same thing that the world said ain't got no worth. And God can change it for my good. Good evening, y'all. I'm glad that God is able. I gotta go now. Thank God that God works miracles in my life. That's all. The text is telling us that God is able to work a miracle in your life. He can take the same stuff and make it into a miracle for your life. He can take flour and sugar and butter and eggs and a little oil individually. They won't get you nothing. If you mix them all, 
First year came and went, and I didn't get a bike. The second year came, and they said, what you want for Christmas? I said, I want a bicycle. The second year went and came, and by the time I didn't get a bicycle. The third year came, and they said, what you want for Christmas? I said, I want a bicycle. The third year came and went, and I didn't get a bicycle. The fourth year came, and they said, and they asked me again, what you want for Christmas? And I said, all I want is a bicycle. The fourth year came, and I didn't get a bicycle. The fifth year came, and I figured it out. And they weren't going to get me no bicycle. Hallelujah, in the fifth year. So I didn't ask for a bicycle. All of my brothers and sisters, they've been asking every year for a bicycle. And in the fifth year, the bicycle, it finally came. But I missed out on my bicycle. Cause I gave up on my parents and somebody to think you're missing out on the promise of God. Cause you've given up hope what God can do. I'm here to encourage you to keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand. See, God don't operate on chronos. God operates on kairos. Chronos means the clock. It goes from 12 to 1 to 2. That's chronos. That's chronological. And I'm glad that God will work on chronos. But God will work on kairos. Here it is. In our life, we have four seasons. We have summer, autumn, winter. And spring, but when we operate on God's time, God will add to the seasons. Instead of four seasons, He gives five seasons. It's a two season, and all the Bible is saying that if you trust in God, you will have a two season. You will have a time when God is ready to work. And I'm happy to bring the news. I'm happy to do the point. And God is ready to operate in the light. God is ready to somebody help us do Somebody help us do Somebody help us Superman showed up in Michael's life and it renewed 
Michael's hope, uh, and he could give uh, and give again. Uh, when Superman showed up, uh, Chris Marie, uh, he came with money uh, for research uh, on this injury. Uh, he came with people uh, trying to understand uh, how to help him uh, because Superman showed up. Uh, but I don't know about you, uh, but I'm glad uh, that Superman uh, is in the building. Uh, Don't give up on your vision. 
Don't give up on what God has spoken. Don't stop praying. Don't stop serving. Don't stop giving. Don't stop living. Because here it is. God ain't done yet. Hallelujah. He still got more to do. He just got to wait. You got to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he'll strengthen your heart. Wait. Wait, I say on the Lord. The doors of the church are open this morning. There may be somebody here this morning that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You can come this morning as a candidate for baptism. You can come on your Christian experience or by letter. You can come giving the Lord your hand, your heart, give the preacher your hand. Hallelujah. Is there one today? Anybody here that does not know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior? Maybe you know him as your personal Lord and Savior, but but you haven't been living your life that way. And today you heard his voice. Hallelujah. You heard it clear. The knock on, on your heart is the Lord saying, I want to be the head of your life. Hallelujah. And you heard his voice saying, hallelujah, it's time for you to get back right with me. You know him, but you haven't been living your life that way. Or you're in this place and you don't have a place where you worship, man. You don't have a place that you call home. And God says today that, that he wants he wants this place, Progressive Community Church, to be your home. If that's you, whether in this sanctuary or watching by social media or wherever you're watching from, we invite you into a saving relationship with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Here it is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. And my sister and my brother, we invite you into a saving relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You may be watching, hallelujah, and, and, and you want to know more of what that means, or you may even be in this sanctuary you want to know more what that means see me after service if you're in the sanctuary if you're online send us a, a, a message a private message or dm us and, and we'll help walk you through hallelujah we'll help walk you through the steps to salvation the steps to being saved amen let's give the lord a hand clap of praise this morning hallelujah prepare our hearts and our minds for our ministry of sowing our seeds this morning Amen. We're going to sow our seeds this morning. Amen. We sow both spiritual and physical seeds. I dare you to get your physical and your spiritual seed in your hand. I dare you to get your spiritual and your physical seed in your hand. Lift it high. Hallelujah. You can do this by way of social media. Just lift it high, lift it high. Even if it's your phone, lift it high. We sow both spiritual and physical seed. My spiritual seed is the seed of faith and love. Put it in your hand and lift it high. Repeat after me. This is my seed. I did not deserve it. But God so graciously provided it unto me. Therefore, I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed. In obedience to God's word and in expectation of the harvest. 100% obedience to God, 100% obedience to tithing, 100% faith. Amen. All throughout the sanctuary, you're going to come around and you can, you can sow your seed. Or you may be here in the sanctuary or even watching by way of social media. And we invite you to our cash app, it's the dollar sign. TCC Gary, the dollar sign TCC Gary. You can go there and sow your seed, or, or you can simply go to uh, Tithely or Diplify. Just look up Progressive Community Church of Gary, and it's in that place where you can sow your where you can sow your seed at Progressive Community Church. Progressive Community Church of Gary. You can go there. You can sow your seed, or, or you can send your seed in by by way of a snail mail. You can send it to 201 East Fifth Avenue, Gary, Indiana, 46402. Amen, amen, amen. I have some 
us that you need to come up and just share some with us, amen, and invite you out uh, as we prepare for our Christmas program, amen, amen, as we prepare for our Christmas program, amen, amen, and let's pray, Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we thank you for these these gifts, oh God, that, that you have given to your children. We thank you for their obedience to your word to sow back, oh God, what you have blessed them with. And now, God, we pray that you would bless them some 30, some 60, some hundred fold, sow back into their bosoms, oh God. But God, you're an unlimited God. We won't place any limits on you. We simply say, however you want to bless your people to have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Come on up, Sister Janice, as we prepare our hearts and our minds for our Holy Communion. Amen. 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 Those watching by way of social media, get, get some crackers and juice. And the significance is really in us doing this together. It's in us doing this together as a, as a, as a church and as a ministry. Amen. Come on. Everyone. Praise the Lord. We haven't been uh, able to, due to COVID, have our Christmas program for the last uh, last year like we normally do. But this year, we will be able to have our Christmas program. So, um, everyone, I'm asking everyone, please bring out your children, bring your grandchildren out, bring your nieces and nephews out. We started our first rehearsal um, yesterday, which was at 12 o'clock. The next two rehearsals will be on December 11th and the 18th. And our program will be Actually, the Sunday before Christmas, it will be December 19th. So everyone, please bring your children out. I think they will enjoy it. We're doing a play, and a play is entitled Remembering the Real Reason for the Season. So everyone, please bring your children out um, to be involved in our play this year. Amen. 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 Bring your children, your grandchildren, your godchildren. Amen. Bring them all out. Amen. Whatever uh, children you have, bring your neighbor's children, bring them here so that we can participate. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now we partake of the Lord's Supper. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yeah, you may get your, your cup in your hand and open up your bread and, and open up the juice. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye drink it, Eat this bread and drink this cup. Ye do to the Lord's death till he come. Most gracious God, we thank you for your sacrifice on Calvary. We thank you, O oh God, that you sent your son Jesus to, to take our place on that cross, O oh God. He died as a representation for the sins of the world. We laid all of our sins upon Jesus and he took our punishment. He took our place. God, we'll never forget that, oh God. But we thank you, God, that he just didn't die, but, but on the third day he rose again with all power in his hand. And so we thank you, oh God, that because we are in him, that we too will rise again, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Now we pray that you would wash us of our iniquity, cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness and our holiness, oh God that we might be in, in your presence, O oh God, pure and holy. Bless our minds, O oh God, that, that we are purified, even in our minds, our hearts, our souls, and our spirits, and that we are one with you on this day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Take the bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. At the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, lifted high, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Partake of the bread. 
After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Partake. Keeping in mind our announcements here on the back of your bulletin, every morning at 6 o'clock a.m. we have we have our prayer line every morning at 6 o'clock a.m. Please join us on the prayer line. We're in the month of Rejoice. And then again on this Tuesday, I heard it was an awesome time on this past Tuesday with our grief share. So on this Tuesday, I encourage you again I encourage you again to come out this Tuesday. If you're struggling with the transition of a loved one, we invite you out to Grief Share where we are dealing with those issues of loved ones who have made transitions. Amen? Amen. So come on out this Tuesday at 4 o'clock p.m. And then don't forget Wednesday at noon is, is our Word on Wednesday. is Bible study. And then at 5 o'clock, Harmony Bridge is restocked. And then on next Saturday, at noon, we need all the children to come out. Adults, bring your children out. Amen. To participate in the Christmas program. As we understand and learn the true reason for the season. Amen. Amen. If our hearts and minds don't want to court, let us stand. Oh, yeah, there is food. There's food at Harmony Bridge, but there's also a lot of food that's still left over here to my left. You are right. Please help yourself if you have a need for food or know somebody that has a need for food. It's food that comes from whole foods that we have it here. So help yourself uh, to the food. Amen? Amen. Most gracious God, we thank you. We bless you and we praise you on this day. We thank you for your word, O oh Lord, my God, that helps us to find hope again, O oh God, that the hope has been lost. We thank you, O oh God, that, that you speak to us, God, in the very area, O oh God, where we lost hope. You come and you confront us in that way. We thank you, O oh God, that you teach us that we can, we can still be a participation, O oh God, even when we've had some painful situations. And then finally, God, we thank you that, hallelujah, your time is, is not our time, O oh God, that you work on your time, God. Help us to to stop looking at life through the wrong lens, to stop looking at it through our own eyes or, or looking at ourselves as having the answers, God. But Lord, help us to place all of our hope, all of our trust in you, knowing, God, that you will work it out on your own time. Bless your children, O oh God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence. May your protective hand be upon each and over each one of us. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.